Hi, everyone. Hi. Aisha, I wanted to maybe start um, by asking you a little bit about um, who Shasta is and how did she become who she is? Well, Shasta is a pop diva superstar. Um, she, her, well, her, her roots reign. Uh, she comes out of uh, Louisiana. She's this amazing glamazon sort of pop diva persona, but she's also someone that, you know, people can connect with in a very human way using topics that people can relate to that people of, often also don't really hear about uh, through music, you know, a lot of times people don't address like insecurity, like in a song, um, in the way that she does it. I'd love to hear how the, um, first the, the concept and the format changed throughout time. Mm -hmm. And then also about like afterwards about the collaboration of you all. And the idea was to make a performance that, uh, was Shasta in a way that we haven't seen her yet diving deeper into uh, subject matters uh, that were more political, sort of more personal. At the end of the day, and I will say specifically with Shasta, we're always thinking about the now and even a little bit ahead. Um, so it would have been kind of a lie if this time came and we didn't address it or didn't even utilize it as a part of the framework. The purpose of Shasta is to kind of kind of shed a light on some of those spaces that people are embarrassed about talking about or thinking about for themselves, um, but doing it in a way that, um, yeah, it does use humor, but it's, it's not necessarily making fun of you or making fun of the situation. It's just another way of looking at it. Mm -hmm. And lockdown also with BLM movement, everything that was um, transpiring over the summer, we kind of collected a little bit that residue is in is in us it's on us it's everywhere you know what i mean it's not even residue we're kind of in the thick of it always and it still very much feels like that being in this space where we're like everybody's at home and you know the last four years have been insanity and like all the stuff the protests everything that's been going on black people are like constantly like you know just trying to like find the way to like get to the next spot, you know, get to the next space in life without, you know, constantly feeling like we can never just have our peace. There was this really funny article of this writer, Ernest Owens, where he um, describes uh, doing therapy um, virtually uh, and how one of the sessions after not having gone for a moment, uh, one of the first sessions after being in lockdown for a while, he said that his therapists were like, wow, you look you look really good. You're almost glowing. <laughs> and the article takes this really funny turn where he describes his glow as being the result of not dealing with microaggression every day and not getting on, not being on the ground to experience that thing that, quite frankly, people of color experience, women experience every day, all day. Um, and I think talking about that um, or just acknowledging that I think as collectively as black people, as, as a lot of people are saying right now, and there's been a lot of writing about um, people of color, black people in particular seeking therapy. Um, and that actually being like one of the most liberating and powerful moves we can make, um, not even just seeking out the therapy, but openly talking about the desire, the need, the, um, the search the way we think about it is like, well, who am I going to talk to? And this is me personally, is who am I going to talk to? Can I talk to someone that looks like me? And so um, that's kind of how it all opened up, just like kind of having a humorous approach to the idea of searching for a therapist or therapy. Also to, you know, trying to play with this idea of, of, of therapy, but also not necessarily being like, on the nose and not, you know, it's like, it could be, we thought about it could be like considered just like meditation and like take people through a meditation. It's like, ah, is that what we want to do? Like, you know, so we explored as a um, different types of therapies and we're like, well, how can we shape it so that we're playing with these different types of therapies and how can we, you know, use them to inspire what we're creating? And that was sort of how we, we kind of went into it. And then also with David, introducing David, Saint, our wonderful video 
artist who uh, came into the process. We were like, okay, we have to figure out how to do this digitally. And it's like, mm, I'm not that person. Justin's not that person. <laughs> the, the experience of joining you guys was, was, for me, what made it so significant is considering the time that we, we are going, everything that we're going through in this time. And, and I, I, I really was, I've been bunkered in with my, with my family the entire time. And, and, and I, and I didn't have an avenue to express myself. I didn't have that, you know, and I feel like you guys actually brought the therapy to me, you know, and, and, and once you got, once I was able to like feel the, every, everything that you guys were emoting and, 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 and what you guys were creating and the direction you guys were going, um, it was so easy for us to kind of just like hit the ground running. It felt very collective from the very beginning, I have to say. And, and something that I was wondering is right now, I think something that we're all asking ourselves is like, what's the future of performance? What's the future of the arts, et cetera, et cetera. But I think that you're, what you're bringing is also what's the future of a process. Yeah, I think um, for Aisha and I, we generally are working with more elements at a time, even, I mean, generally, I mean, we would, work on music, bring that into another space and then develop music more according to some physical parameters or like we would be playing maybe with a little bit of lighting and there might be another DJ or something like that. But at this, this one came down to us having space and time and budget for us to be really in cahoots and to really scale down. We did end up re reimagining a thing and very specifically, an audio and visual experience that doesn't feel like you're getting shortchanged or doesn't feel like some variation on live performance. Because at the end of the day, like what we capture is performative audio wise. It's um, there's so many things happening um, in terms of the, uh, the textual layers and whatnot that I think people will have an experience um, and an experience of liveness that they also are kind of implicated in and kind of are responsible for. And that's the cool thing about something like this too, is um, one could like be tucked in their bed and watch it and maybe jump out when, you know, Shasta directs you to do a little bit of workout. Um, but there's also a way in which you could literally be super crazy in your room or in your house and turn up the stereo really loud uh, <laughs> and have equally as, um, fun and maybe insightful of an experience as as any other kind of mode of of, of listening um, yeah i think it's a thing unto itself but another thing that was very freeing was like going through the footage and 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 watching and watching aisha play and experiment you know that was also another another thing that that, that lent itself to 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 playing as well right and experimenting you know because 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 in between the takes, you know, what you don't see are the moments where he's just in and out and she's just trying new things and expressions and emotions and you're just dipping and diving, you know, and it's just watching watching that happen. It, 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 it also like lends itself, you know, to, 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 to me as well. I know that you decided to kind of um format the piece in, in chapters and that each chapter is looking at a different type of therapy. And I would love to hear a little bit more about that and how did you choose to go on this? We went down Google rabbit hole searches for different types of therapies and therapies that we thought would be like interesting or funny or like can, can give us a, a, a lot of uh, space to create within. Thinking about people actually doing these things um, and thinking about what things were kind of like felt fun for us, but also seemed to work well with sound and visuals. So um, thinking about things like color therapy and chromotherapy and um, even wilderness therapy was uh, um, like, we just kind of picked a, like a, a I guess a Thanksgiving plate of therapy ideas. <laughs> I personally think it would be fun for people to know that not just fun but useful for people to know that there are a lot of us out there who are trying to get help and um not just because something's wrong but because things could be better mm -hmm. or they could be more understood and i think that's at the base of what i'm i'm kind of after right now it's like uh, precision and clarity 
No, I would just like to share that. I just hope people, you know, can enjoy, watch with an open a mind and just let themselves be a part of the experience and kind of let the music and the visuals sort of just lead them into a space to open up to whatever it sparks, you know what I mean, on the inside. And if it's a healing process, great. And if it's a if it's if some parts of it are funny, if it's offensive, if it's like whatever, let it be what it is and just enjoy the ride, you know. Ditto. <laughs>